Hello guys. I decided that I kind of want to show you what I've been using to make my animations all this time. And it's a little something called Wick Editor. It's a free online browser-based tool that you can use to animate, program, and sketch. It's best experienced on PC because the mobile version's a bit finicky at the moment. But it's definitely still in development and you should give the devs some time. Although there hasn't really been an update in a while. I'm kind of wondering how they're doing. So, when you first start Wick Editor, this is what you'll see. Now, this might differ, this UI might differ depending on when you're watching this. And here's Patreon supporters and stuff. Change log. And of course, a nice little drawing of Wig Editor's mascot, Flashy. So, when you get past that, you'll be brought to this screen. This is the actual editor. It's a bit laggy because OBS and browser equals. However, there is a beta standalone app. However, it might be a few versions behind. So, let's start down here. These are your keyframes. You can click to make new ones, drag, and then you can also delete, lock and hide your layers, create new ones, your gap fill mode, and change the size of the frames. By default, they are on medium. You can also add frames and add tweens. We'll get to those in a moment. Now, let's go over this. This is your asset library, and you can use it to upload or add built-in assets. You can add things like pre-made buttons, multi-frame clips, links, boxes, text boxes, and even sounds. Also alternative oops you can also alternatively click the upload button and upload a file for example I just uploaded a picture of Jumbleton so now you can actually take Jumbleton here our lovely lovely Jumbleton now you can drag him here And give him some drop shadow. So um, uh, we'll just leave Jumbleton to sit here for now. See you, Jumb. See you soon, Jumbleton. Now this right here is your inspector in Outliner. Outliner shows all the objects in your project, and the inspector pops up when you have an object selected, like a frame, image path, or sound, or a tween. For example, this shape right here, the inspector gives us the option to make it a clip or button, change its colors, change its opacity, change its rotation, scale, and positioning on the canvas. Now let's move up to this bar here. Here's your undo and redo buttons. Copy and paste. This doesn't work cross browser. Delete. And some canvas actions like layering, flipping, and this stuff. It's kind of broken. Now, let's go ahead over to the main event. Here's your cursor tool. You can use this to highlight and click things. This is your brush tool. You can change the size, 
stability level, pressure, and brush modes. And it will use the fill color. That came out a bit crude. Next is the pencil tool. It only has the option to change thickness, but instead of using your fill color, it'll use your stroke color. Next is your eraser tool. You can change the size of the eraser and use it to easily erase things that you just don't want on your project. You can also easily just highlight and press the backspace or delete keys. Next are self explanatory tools, your rectangle tool, your circle tool, and your line tool. So, circles actually have the ability to have two colors, so do squares, but lines have a, uh, these lines have a, uh, a width of not a number and that essentially means that you can't resize them on the uh, you can't resize them on the y-axis and they only use the stroke color oh whoops next is your path cursor this is best done with a rectangle oh I forgot to go over the options this right here allows you to round your rectangle. So the path cursor allows you to take different points along your path and shape them. For example, from this square, watch what we can do with it. So this is no longer a square. In fact, I have no idea what that is. Next is your text tool. You can easily use this tool oh, to make text. And then your fill bucket. If you draw a weird random shape and you want to fill it in, you can set your uh, whatever this is, and just click, and it will fill your object. And say you came across a color that you really like, but and you want to grab it for yourself, you can use that eyedropper tool, and the color will show up here. Next is these controls. These are for onion skinning, which allows you to see the next frames and previous frames while only focusing on one. This is good for a frame by frame animation. Next is pan, which you can use to pan around your project. The zoom in and out buttons, recentering, and moving the playhead. Next are these fundamental controls here. This will bring you to your GitHub sponsors and Patreon pages. And these are this is just the info list. This pulls up a minimized project settings window. And the new project creates a new project. Open will allow you to open from a .wic file, which can be accessed, which can be created from using save. You can also export it as GIFs, videos, zips, HTMLs, wave, image sequences, or SVGs. In case you're wondering, you can actually create, you can actually export clips by themselves by pressing Control E. It'll save as a WIC OBJ file.
Next is the Goose Settings window. This allows you to change keybinds, onion skinning, and it also will allow you to change your project's name, background, frame, re frame per second rate, and resolution. But finally, there's the color switchers. Usually, I like to keep this on spectrum mode, which allows you to tinker with hex, RGB values, and transparency. My favorite green is a uh, 4B F00. So we can just draw a little bit of that. Now, let's get in to animating. So, there are two distinct styles of animation. The first of which I'm going to cover is frame by frame. So we're going to turn onion skinning on using the zero key and make this one frame. And now we can copy that. And we have just made this this little bouncing cube. The next distinct style of animation is tweening. You can use tweens and Wick will actually animate it for you. But if you're wondering how to get that easing effect, you can rotate it between tweens and change the easing type. In will gradually get faster out will gradually get slower, and in out will just. So we'll actually set this to in and set this to out, and it comes out looking at something like this. Cool, right? But now that we have this, we're going to turn it into a simple clicker game. So now you see that this is a clip. Let's go over to our script section. The code editor uses a modified version of JavaScript, which is actually, it uses a modified version of JavaScript, which is actually, it actually has some action script commands like go to and play. So, now we have this. We're going to create another layer and make it the same length. So, we can add a new script. The mouse section of the script editor allows you to do mouse-related scripts, keyboard to keyboard-related scripts, and timeline to things like default, load, update, which happens every tick, and unload. However, what we're going to do is a mouse click script. So, we'll do project.score equals plus equals one. This will increase project.score by one every time it is clicked. But you see, the thing is, there's no good way to decrease the score. So we're going to need to shrink this and put the animation inside of the clip. You can enter a clip, a clip by clicking on it and then going to the inspector and clicking edit timeline. Or you can do it by just double clicking on the clip. You can also exit the clip via this, which shows you your project tree or by double clicking anywhere that isn't an object or path. Now that we have this, we can make it stop so that it will no longer move. Once the playhead reaches this frame, it will stop. 
also add into the default script, we need to define project.score, and we'll do that at zero. Oh, and by the way, semicolons are optional here. They're good for organized code, but you don't need them. Next, we're going to grab some text. Text is a very versatile object. It can actually be set with code, and you can change the weight and font. I'd have to say my first, my personal favorite would have to be quicksand. So we are going to name our text object. We're just going to name it T. So now we're going to make it a clip. And in an update script, we can put this dot t dot set text. Score add a space. And then we add a plus to signify that there's something more than text going on here. Add our project dot score variable, another plus and a little exclamation mark for funsies. Right now, our score is zero, but as you can see, when we click this box, it'll actually start to go up. How long did that take us to make an entire simple click game? So, as you can see, Wick is a very versatile tool for animating things like this bouncing box, coding things like the score counter, and sketching things like, uh, of course, Jumbleton we have here. And then there are projects that are a lot more than just this, actually. If we click open, I have a few files on my computer that'll demonstrate this. The first of which being the new Systematics OS that I've been working on for a while. So this was all done with animation, coding, and sketching. And this was all done in Wick Editor except for some assets like sound and stuff. Those were done in like Inkscape and GouageBank. I've actually made a bit more progress with this. That's as far as that got him. And get ready for this. We have managed to make an entire game. You might have seen this in my Two Jumbletons Duking It Out video, but we have created a game called Forum Fighters Rewritten. Well, just Forum Fighters. We rewritten is at the end because uh, there is an original. For those who don't want to wait for all that intro stuff, it is a bit glitched right now because of its alpha state. It don't say development build for nothing. So as you can see, it's a fighting game. So there's a bunch of attacks you can use. We'll take Jumbleton. We'll just put Pumpkin Head over here. So focus on Jumbleton. He's player one. His up attack is Plasmoid, where he shoots a ball of plasma into the sky. His down air special is Fire Platform, which summons a platform made of lava that only Jumbleton can touch, aka not the other player. And his down air special is sweep the leg. If you just click attack he's in air, he does whatever the hell that is. This is his regular attack. And this is his side <laughs> technicolor punch. As 
see, Wick Editor is absolutely great for creating things like this. You can combine music, animations, drawing, and JavaScript coding to create something absolutely amazing. And there's also a lovely forum at forum.wickeditor.com you can join. And it's just cool. You can join. I've also made a recipe book with this. In case you want a recipe for maple, apple, cinnamon, butter fried chicken nuggets. Uh, Although sometimes it will glitch, it just is, requires a reload. And that's pretty much a brief introduction to Wick Editor. So, of course, credit is needed. So, Wick Editor was created by a team of four. So, Corey Emery, Anna Guzman, Zach Raspoli, and, of course, the head of it all, Luca DeMosco. Those are the creators of this very fun tool. I discovered it through a friend who discovered it through the main place where this was discovered, Alan Becker. So, you can find Wick Editor at wickeditor.com slash editor and the form at form.wickeditor.com. So, as you can see, versatile tool, great community. It's just a great place overall. So, I hope you enjoyed this cool little tutorial. And, I will catch you in the next one. <laughs>